I'm from New York. Where are you from? Look, I got a deal for you. You don't tell nobody, okay? I gotta, I gotta sort of warm up for it, eh? I want to be a successful actor, to be doing acting full time. It's this ambition inside, this deep desire to, to fulfill my dreams. My name is uh, Logan Piffew. I'm 28 years of age and I'm an Assyrian. <laughs> My father is the parish priest for the Assyrian community here in Wellington. The community was in need of a leader, of a priest, and they kindly asked my father to put up his hand and serve the community, and he did. We had a very strict upbringing. We really felt like we were the, the royal family. I mean, we weren't allowed to step out of line, and anything that we did reverberated around the Assyrian community. So my father always wanted us to be the perfect example. We weren't allowed to laugh or, or smile during church or prayers. So everything became a lot funnier when I wasn't allowed to laugh. Everything I saw or heard was, was of, of comedic value to me. <laughs> it's gonna mess up my hair. <laughs> this is uh, my father, he's busy writing some documents for the church. How are you? Hi, good, thank you. How are you? This is my sister, Christina. Hi. Got the troublemakers here, my nephews. Usually when I tell people that we're Assyrian, a lot of people think that I'm from Syria, which is incorrect. There is Syrian people and Assyrian people. Assyrian people are a minority Christian group based in northern Iraq. We're an ancient civilization. We've been around for about 6,000 years. Um, the downfall of our empire was 6, 12, um, BC, so the people still survived, although our country didn't. Up high, down low, so slow, <laughs> mum. Hi, Lucky. My family uh, escaped the borders of Iraq in 1986 during the Iran-Iraq War. We were in Iran for three years, and then um, yeah, came to New Zealand in 1989. <laughs> Currently, I'm working as a taxi driver. In the last year or so, I've been on about eight different film sets. So much so that I had to quit my, my regular job and, and do a job like this. I'm keeping my acting side and my church and family side apart, and I'm choosing to prioritise my acting, mainly because this is my career, this is what I want to do and I want to prioritise it because I want to get work, I want to be busy as much as I can be. Here we are in my room. This is me. Got a bit of cosmetics here. I think you have to when you're pursuing acting as a career. Oh, this is... Uh, Fahrenheit, this is my favorite fragrance. I've got to get ready to go to Bible study, so I've got to get some clothes on. I've got a call from um, Deacon George and Deacon Ninos. Deacons are sort of the guys that assist my father during masses and prayers and stuff. They wanted to have a word with me tonight after Bible study, so I have a fair idea about uh, on what that's going to be about. Probably my attendance. I haven't been going for a while, so. Alrighty, have a look. Awesome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, yours is the kingdom, and the glory forever. Amen. Why we come to church? Can someone tell me why we should come to church? Yes. Uh, to get in touch with our spiritual side. Good. We come to church because we want to pray and to be in touch with God by prayer. What, what if somebody who comes to church, who doesn't really pray, but he just comes to church, but there's someone at home really prays, but he doesn't come to church. Is there a difference between those two people? It's a big difference. It's really completely big. big at home, you are selfish. In the church, you are not selfish. 
Just the reason why I asked the question is because some one of my friends said a joke one time. It was quite funny, but it was really true. He said, what's the difference between people who pray in a church and people who pray in a casino? And I said, what? He said, people who pray in a casino, they mean it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, we want to talk privately about an mm -hmm. issue that actually we're facing. You know, recently we seeing that some people or uh, some youth group, they're not attending to the Bible study anymore. Mm. So as I spoke to him last night and I told him, if we going to login and tar target login, and let's see login if he can go back to those youth and tell them mm. or to find out with them what they need. Also, he's president of youth group. And don't forget yourself, yeah, you yeah, were yeah. the president of the so youth group. Example. So, what I want you to do is, as a president, as a mm. leader of the youth group, you help us to bring those people because you know them more than us. Yeah, you know, yeah. you have you been a long time with them. You can't them. impact them, you know. Yeah. You can't affect them, yeah, yeah. influence them. I, I if, if, we elected, if, we, if we elected a new youth from everybody, I think if we get... And you want to run away. I put this pressure on you, unfortunately, to say that. <laughs> you help us and you do this job. Here we are at uh, Avalon Studios out in Lower Hutt, just down the road from Nine Nine. What do they call it down here? Nine Nine Two, I know. I think. Here we are, setting up for the uh, final shot of the day. Got the um, crane setup, pretty flash. And action. So I'm currently making a comedy series about my life as an actor. This comedy series uh, is made by me and a group of other upcoming filmmakers out of our own pockets. I do tend to do a lot of unpaid work. I want to do as much work as I can to sort of expose myself to as many people as possible. When I first started my um, acting career, I, I was typecast to play an Arab terrorist, um, which I wasn't too happy with. Uh, I ended up playing the role and then I consulted with my agent and told her that I didn't want any more of these roles. I, I drive a cab so we thought well, why don't we just um, make one of the episodes about me being an Arab cab driver, being typecast to play the Arab cab driver and it's the reoccurring theme throughout the whole series. Cut. Yeah. Good. Better? Yeah. We just wrapped so they went really well, they really held up. Everyone was happy to be on set. <laughs> My father has seen some of my acting work. He hasn't seen much of it. I'm not too fussed if my father does see my work or not. I guess my work is pretty much for, for me. What is the mm. web series about? Uh, the web series is about the life of a struggling actor trying to make it into the Wellington film industry. Mm. Yeah, we're playing up the Wellington film industry to being like Hollywood, and there's an actor trying to break into the industry. Mm. And this actor struggles until he um, lands a big role in a big movie. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a comedy, so oh. it's quite funny. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I am proud of you to be an actor mm. in the future. Yeah, but don't forget your nation, your Australian nation. Yes, um, because like we'd like to you to reflect in your um, actor in your um, projects. Yeah, project. Yeah, about the uh, tragedy of our people, mm. which suffered a lot. Yeah. And what about doing something for our church? The deacons approached me and they asked me, um, Deacon George and Deacon Ninos, about the youth and how we need to start up Bible studies on Sunday evenings. 
we'd like you mm. um, yeah, to encourage them to come to Bible study. Be concerned about our church and our youth people. Being the son of a priest was quite difficult, I found. I tried to hide it from a lot of people that I knew just so that I'd avoid being made fun of. decided after I finished school that I needed to get away and I, and I did. I, I went to Australia for a little while and I tended to choose a different path just to experience what life had to offer without my father's presence. So I, I thought that was probably the best thing I could have done. We want to promote the web series and get it out there to as many people as possible that, that may be interested in my story. So once we've got this, this in the can, we've released it, we can use that as a pitch for ourselves to make either a second series or something completely new. The audience will really buy into Logan's journey, they'll be following, they'll be rooting for you, they'll want you to become this movie star, they'll want you to get your big break, and I think they'll just be hanging off every, every single episode, mate. We're not just a comedy, there's a bit of depth there with yeah, your character. Yeah. We're looking at the whole right. struggling mm. ethnic sort of minority who's mm. going to get cornered into yeah. particular roles and that's things right. like that. That's pretty much uh, my life story really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much summing up what's happened to... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite genuine, happens. yeah. We're not going to have you forever. What happens yeah. if you get on another, what like, was it, The Cure? The Cure, yeah. You know, I mean, you're, you're, you've already you're, kept you here like that for over a year now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that, that, I was just going to bring that up. Like, it's just a matter of time before somebody yeah. tells me we need to chop their hair off. Yeah. And that's it. I can't. There goes our continuity. I mean, that... our hair gel budget's just got out of control already, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky that you're a Syrian, so your hair growth is legendary, but um, uh, yeah. we just got to get it out there first. And, and I, yeah, that, That's my concern at the moment. We really need to do this. Yeah, we, we need we, to finish this do, off. Yeah. We want to promote the web series and get it out there, and we thought, you know, maybe we could pitch it to a big production company by the name of Gibson Group, which is run by Dave Gibson. So it's all very well talking about, you know, pitching to, to Gibson Group, mm. but at the end of the day, someone's got to ring the man or we've got to get it in there somehow, so who's going to take that? I think Logan's the man. He's approached all of our celebs. I think he's the man that should make <laughs> the phone call. Yeah. You can even yeah. use yeah. my phone if you want, mate. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, ring right. I'll dial the number for you. <laughs> Oh, it's all you, Logan. Put on the speakerphone. Ah. I want to hear what you say. Bara, cool. Bara. Cool. Hi there, uh, can I please speak with Dave Gibson? Cool. Syrian. Flag. This is the candle that my father got when he was when he first became a priest back in what was it date? September 1992. This is me when I graduated back in uh, 2008. Did a degree in philosophy and theatre. This sort of reminds me of the first episode of our web series where I'm preparing for a massive audition for a big film role. It's sort of the same here, I guess. Um, so. Go for a shirt. Um, I think this red one sort of sticks out. Meeting up with someone like Dave Gibson uh, can be really nerve-wracking, especially for a, an actor like myself. Um, it's one of those things where he can either put a big X next to your name, or you know, he could call you for the next job. Um, I hope that, um, if anything, he gets a mental image of my face, and um, next time he needs an actor to play whatever, then uh, he'll just contact me. So <laughs> now I just gotta sort of tidy myself up. There we go. Bring on Dave. See Jim dressed up. It's good, only, eh? only a respectable one. Logs looking flat. Yes. Hey, mate. How you doing, man? Hey, guys. Hey. So you have hey. to be Logan. Logan, nice hey. to meet you. Hey. Um, 
The name's Logan Johnson, 28 years of age, uh, based in Wellington. Okay, well, if you've read the brief, you know that we are casting the lead role in the sequel to Love Dark. So it's kind of like when um, Val Kilmer took over the role of Batman from Michael Keaton. Okay, look, Hogan, this isn't going to work out for us, I don't think, okay? The name's Logan. Okay, now you'd be perfect for another role. Um, we'd like you to read for Haseem, who is the Indian cab driver. Come on, that'd be perfect for you. Come on, little tide. Come on. If you want an Arab cab driver called Timawira Morrison or Cliff Curtis. <laughs> nice end. <Jeez>. Cool. <laughs> okay, so there's so are they like continuing adventures? So they're gonna be Yeah, pretty much. There's a there's a bit of a truth to all these. Every little sort of episode is is attached to an experience that I've I've been through. And you are actually a taxi driver. And I am actually a taxi driver. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that joke, you know, that you're running on, people immediately stereotype you. Yeah. That's funny. That amuses yeah. me. And I get it, and at the same time I feel guilt, you know, yeah. because you're right. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what's happening. You know, and you've got, you can play some stuff off that, you know. Yeah. The um, other thing is, in, in a funny way, when something's three quarter finished or finished, and you show it to someone, it's nice, and we can talk about it, but mm -hmm. there's not much you know, that anyone can do, you know, yeah, can, right. we can be pleasant yeah. about it and we can, we can mm -hmm. do it. But there's no point in me saying, oh, I'm going to give you $10 because I can make 12 because I can't immediately see that there. Yeah. But the trick is what's next. Yeah. The meeting with Dave went really, really well. Although this is not one of the projects that is in line with his work, it's really kick-started uh, the momentum again for us. This has definitely done big things for us. It's put our foot in the door. So it was quite a successful meeting for us. I'm alone quite often with my acting. I get direction from directors, but for me that's not enough. I need to know what I'm doing and if I'm doing it right or if I'm doing it wrong. I want to strengthen my dramatic side, my emotional side. That's basically where I want to end up, just doing serious roles, um, portraying real life people sometimes as well. I think if you realise what you're good at and can pursue it and perfect it, that is the driving force. To be emotionally accessible, fabulous, mm. you're in. What is acting for you about? Acting for me is about a release. Um, when I'm acting, I feel free. Um, I'm in a different sort of zone, in a different environment. So what is your dream? 10, 20 years, whatever it takes, where are you at? I want to be an accomplished actor, to influence and inspire others. What is it that you want to talk about. My mother always told me to make a film about when we escaped the, the great Iran-Iraq war back in 86. Mm -hmm. And to me that would be a fascinating story to tell people. The, the people that I associate with the Assyrians have faced a lot of torture and hardship and I want to be a, a, sort of an activist or, or an ambassador for the Assyrian community and get the message out there that, that my people are still hurting. So with this monologue that you have chosen, what would you like to do? Um, I guess just deliver Roll it. into that? Deliver it? Yeah. Okay, let's go. So, all of your life experience, mm -hmm. your country, what your people have been through, what inspires you, can you create that image in front of you? Yeah. Can you feel it inside of you? Yeah. If you've got Stop. an opportunity to speak, what would you do and what would you say? I'm listening. I don't want to be an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. Don't try to act it. Just be willing to, to change my mind, to change my opinion. The way of life can be free and, and beautiful. I wish to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, don't give yourself to brutes. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Good, cut. This time you don't have a hope. Mm -hmm. You tried and you tried. Your life, done. Nothing changed. How do you feel about it? What Logan is afraid of? Failure. And this was the first time I actually admitted it to someone, that I do feel as if the, 
And a certain nation is depending on me and people like me who will do our nation good. When people tell me go back to your own country, I say, I don't have one, so it will be nice to, to have a proper country um, under our nation's name. These two worlds that I'm living in are slowly starting to, to come together as one and I'm starting to come full circle, really starting to appreciate um, my culture and my church. I thank the Lord every day that I'm here, otherwise I would have been stuck back in Iraq probably fighting a war or already dead, who knows. I've realised that um, what my father was telling me was absolutely right, he just wanted me to be the best man that I could be. Uh, and do what I could to help humanity. I've got to get going, I've got to go to work now. So um, if I don't see you in my cab picking you up uh, on a Friday or Saturday night, then uh, hopefully you'll see me on the big screen. But take it easy, yeah? See you later.